This is Sean with Voices of Racing. I'm speaking to a gentleman that is across the United States from Indy right now. And, uh, and well, sir, your name is Denny Miller. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And you are located right now in Redondo Beach, California. Is that right? That's right. So uh, what, what brought you out of Redondo Beach? How long have you been out in that area? I lived, I grew up in uh, Boswell, Indiana, in Benton County, lived in Lafayette, Indianapolis, and then in 86, moved to uh, uh, Redondo Beach, California, uh, and lived there since. Uh, didn't All have right, a, so needed to buy a new winter coat, and I couldn't afford that, so it was easier to move to California. All right, so we're going to go through some images that have to do with uh, your life within racing and also writing the book um, about the life of Eddie Sachs, uh, The Clown Prince, uh, which came out in 2005. So the, the first shot, we're going to bring it home to uh, the family. And your your daughter is Karina. She's 33 years old. And that's a shot of you guys this year at the Speedway, at the 500. And also that's a shot when she was three years old so it's a 30-year gap there mm -hmm. why don't you give me a little bit of her background uh what is she doing and 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 uh, maybe a little bit about the day spending with her at the speedway for the 500 yeah that's an annual thing that we go to the indy 500 together uh she's gotten to where she's quite knowledgeable on the nuances of indy and it's a good father-daughter thing uh, that we enjoy uh, she currently is a OR nurse, uh, but is now moving toward with the equivalent of a PhD and, and as a nurse practitioner, and she's uh, doing some coursework now in Barcelona, Spain. All right, so here's another shot of you guys enjoying a couple of America's brews, and uh, a gentleman that's JC, and how do you pronounce his last Agent name? Janian. Agajanian Jr. And he was a, a his what's the correlation that it was his father of the was the owner of the Parnelli Jones 1963 yes. winner and also the Troy Rutman 1952 winner. Right, a famous famous name at the Indy Indy 500. Uh, uh, J. C. Agajanian, and that's one of his sons. His other brother is Kerry Agajanian, the famed uh, attorney. That's uh, a racing attorney, and then they have a third brother named Chris Agajanian, uh, and uh, just uh, they're they're around every year, and they own uh, and tie in a little bit with Mike Curb and sponsor um, uh, IndyCar as well. Still, and there's another that. gentleman that I've been able to meet a few times, Brian Wilcox. His great grandfather mm -hmm. won it in 19. 19 and his, his grandfather also run it and helped inspire the movie uh, breaking away uh, what what's your association with brian have you known him pretty much his whole life because of his family no, no actually we we met uh, uh last year at uh greg's party uh, he was real helpful in uh, getting other people to buy my eddie rickenbacker book uh, which was kind of neat and um I'm a big fan. I love the movie Breaking Away. Uh, and his great grandfather, uh, also by the name of Howie Wilcox, started the little 500 in Bloomington. And um, so if you've never been to that, go see that one day or see the movie. It's a great movie. And it got nominated for an Oscar as well. And again, Agajanian, just uh, iconic at Indianapolis. All right, so here's a shot of the book that you wrote, and uh, why, why don't you talk about the the art uh, collection that's next to the book and give a little bit of background about the artist from Argentina, and then and and also on the book itself, when did you start writing it? How long did it take you to create it? Okay, well, the Eddie Sachs book took forever. I started that, uh, and it went on about twenty some years before I finally finished it. Uh, and it's got over a hundred vintage photos 
that I got from the archives at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, uh, the book on Eddie Rickenbacker, the famed ace of aces during World War One, who buys the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in 1928 uh, until he sells it to Tony Holman in 1945. Um, because of COVID, I could not get photos. So uh, Hector Catamatori, the noted Argentinian racing artist that did uh, the cover of the Rex Mays book, uh, I had him do the front and back cover of this book. But to uh, since I couldn't get photos, we did full page, uh, very detailed artist portraits of uh, well over 30 Hall of Fame drivers uh, that drove during that 1928 to 1945 uh, period. So the, the contrast is there's vintage racing photos in the Eddie Sachs book, mainly in pertaining to Eddie Sachs. The Rickenbacker book has a very quality artwork by a professional artist uh, doing portraits. Yeah, one thing I liked about you sent both of these surprised me a little bit for my birthday uh, last week, June 29th. But the, the art collection, it's almost like you could individually frame those on a wall and have a whole montage. Because That's the, right. It, that, that's, that was kind of one of your birthday gifts, John, uh, that if you so choose, chose in your pool room or whatever have you, they, they make a nice 8 by 10 portrait to frame. So uh, I'm going to look, see where you frame them and hang them one day. All right. So let's talk about a little bit of your background in broadcast and you know, being a, a racing historian. What really got your start with, you know, I know that you were very young when you first went to the race, but actually getting your feet wet in documenting, interviewing, writing, what were those first scenarios? Well, during, uh, uh, I, I was just hooked as a kid, and I would. They, they had a show called Trackside Daily with Tom Carnegie, and I would watch that uh, religiously. Never would miss Trackside. And then, in uh, I grew up in Boswell, Indiana, which is Benton County, and uh, as a freshman in high school, all through high school, I wrote the sports column called Miller Sport Mill. Um, and in May time, we would do uh, just mainly because of my passion for the Indy 500. We would do uh, weekly. It was a weekly paper, so we had weekly uh, reports and, and activities and things of interest. And then uh, we both went to the same college together, Ball State. And at Ball State, I did some little bit with the, uh, the daily news. Uh, I was in the radio and TV department uh, where Darl Weibel, uh, who would, was part of uh, uh, the Indy 500 uh, race day coverage, uh, but Darl Weibel would also do for WTHI and WAAC uh, live uh, shows for the four days of time trials. Uh, back then they had um, two on the first weekend and uh, two on the following weekend. And I would be the uh, color commentator and they would ask me trivia type questions because after the first day of time trials, uh, there was a lot of air time to fill and and uh, Weibel would ask me all sorts of things. So it made for an inter interesting show. And uh, then I did some public relations work for uh, for various people. Probably one of my better friends is Gary Irvin and his race team. I handled a lot of his publicity and PR and, and things of that nature when he was running the midgets and sprint cars and silver crown cars and particularly when he came to the uh, Indianapolis Motor Speedway to try to qualify for the Indy 500. And then uh, I wrote the book on uh, both of those books and now we have uh, an extremely good YouTube show called um, Indy 500 Yesteryear and Today with Speedway Insiders, Paul Page, Bob Gates, and myself. And it's a nostalgic look at past Indies, but we also do the, uh, what's going on currently in IndyCar. It's a good show. 
particularly in right, so here's the shot and there's the guys. three amigos yeah this is at the uh, old timers luncheon uh for the uh indianapolis 500 was that this year or previous yeah, year that, or was, that was their uh that's their annual uh old timers barbecue so i had the uh pleasure of working for the Unser family and interviewing close to 50 individuals that are uh, from Mario Andretti, Michael Andretti, Doug Bowles, Eddie Cheever. Uh, you know, there was, a, there was a ton of different people that were um, either drivers or w within the industry or, or close family and even some close friends. And Bob Gates, as well as Paul Page, were two of the individuals that I was able to interview. And it's ironic that you found me uh, on the World Wide Web in the old YouTube channel. Of those interviews are, are how we got contacted. And mm -hmm. I'd already interviewed the two other guys that are on the show with you. Yeah. So, uh, and you guys are on the uh, 10th episode now. Is that right? Well, we finished nine and this, uh, this Monday will be on our 10th. Yes. All right. So I'm going to show a little shot here, something that very few people on the planet that have watched Indianapolis 500 are able to do, but you got your lips to the brick. So was that this year? And uh, what, what was the reason that this was the moment that you decided to do it? Oh, it's a, a bucket list thing to kiss the bricks. Uh, ideally would like to kiss it as a winning car owner one day, but uh, I guess that'll have to suffice until that time. All right, so the next shot here, uh, why don't you describe, uh, you know, essentially who, who's there in the shorts? Who's your buddy there in the shorts on, oh, the, on the left? Oh, that's the, the famed Purdue quarterback, Bernie Allen, who uh, uh, led Purdue to the upset of Minnesota when they were number one in the country in 1960 and also beat number two Ohio State that same year, uh, played in the uh, – Blue Gray Bull uh, and went up against Fran Tarkington and the Blue won 35 to 7. Bernie could have been probably a Hall of Fame football player, but he loved baseball better. He hardly spent any time in the minor leagues, basically replaced Billy Martin at second base for the Minnesota Twins and was with the Twins and then the Washington Senators where Ted Williams was uh, – the manager, and then later with the New York Yankees, uh, owned by George Steinbrenner. But back in his day, Steinbrenner was an assistant uh, football coach at Purdue, so there was that connection there. And it's one of these annual things in May. We get together for breakfast, and just a great person and uh, just a tremendous athlete. He was, I know he's gotten several holes in one. He's bowled a 300 game. Uh, I'm trying to talking into getting in a race car yet and so we can do another check another sport off but right, you got team. Eddie Sachs Jr. Yep. on your on your other side there um when when you started writing the book was was he pretty instrumental in giving you a lot of the content a lot no, of the uh, not at all I uh, again I uh I guess modestly stated just a huge Indy 500 historian, and I, I knew basically most of it anyway. I, what, at least, at least all the history of it. Uh, his mom uh, was more helpful in the private stuff that never would get printed. And then through uh, the mom, Eddie and I became real good buddies as well. Uh, but uh, just more, just our friendship. All right, so this next one, you've got obviously an international broadcast interviewing legend, Jay Leno, and he's a huge advocate for vintage cars and all different types of race cars. I'm sure his collection is one of the top probably on in, on the planet. And then you uh, – why don't you give me a little bit of backstory about the Jay Leno situation? And then we'll, sure. We'll in fact, Jay Leno has driven the pace car to start the Indianapolis 500 on two different occasions so he loves he loves the indy 500 uh, he is obviously a, a collector of just fantastic automobiles but um there is a one of the top bookstores in america is in burbank it's called uh 
uh, auto books uh, owned by Tina uh, and uh, Jay Leno oftentimes will come in on Saturdays. I was doing a book signing for the book, uh, The Yeti Rickenbacker Era, and he came by and he's, he knew who Rickenbacker was and he called it Rickenbacker and everything. So we uh, chatted about that for a while, but he has a passion for the Indy 500. So Roger Penske obviously is the head man in charge now. And uh, I've heard a lot of things about even putting in lights around the uh, Indianapolis Motor Speedway track to do possible 24 hours and some other things. He definitely has ramped up the amount of styles and types of race events that are happening, not just the standard 500 and 400. So what, what was this situation with Roger? And what was your first situations actually of, of even meeting Roger, maybe a little bit of backstory of your interactions. Well, uh, there's only been, in essence, four owners of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. You had the original founding fathers of, of Carl Fisher, James Allison, Frank Wheeler, and, and Arthur Newby. And then they sold it to Eddie Rickenbacker in 1928. And then Eddie Rickenbacker sells the Speedway to Tony Holman in 1945. Uh, his daughter, Mary Holman, became Harry Holman George. And then uh, her son is Tony George. So it was the Holman and Holman George family that owned the Speedway from 45 to 2019. And then Roger Penske bought the Speedway in 2019. So he was most interested in in being able to read about uh, uh, one of the the few owners of the of the track, uh, which was Eddie Rickenbacker. And Rickenbacker was just a, a famed. Uh, he was the ace of aces during World War One. Uh, probably the most decorated. Uh, he or Sergeant York uh, from World War One. Rickenbacker was probably more famous because he shot down more. German planes than anyone else. So uh, this was an opportunity to have a private meeting with Roger and go out on his balcony and a huge thrill. That's great. So here's a shot of uh, you with some guys from school, I believe, in the bottom that you went up back up to Muncie, Indiana, and you and I actually went to, went to the same university, Ball State University in journalism. So What's the backstory of your two buddies? And I know you went to Pizza King, which I am a big fan. No, that's like uh, swallows going back to Capistrano. We uh, we every year meet up some uh, college friends and uh, uh, go back for uh, uh, pizza and a couple pitchers. Uh, and that's just an annual, almost an annual event that we do. Uh, Ed Smith being in the middle and Daryl Ringer on the right. Uh, uh, been friends since college. All right. So the other shot there is Mike Leschmidt handling your Eddie Rickenbacker book. Uh, he and I are starting to basically partner up. We're going to be doing the backstories of the vintage indie car owners of the rides and, and their experiences throughout their lives. And, racing was this is out in his facility in brownsburg what was the occasion that you were there um we had chatted on the phone you probably experienced the times when you meet someone for the first time or talk the first time and just almost that instant uh connection uh, great friendship uh, evolved right from the get-go and then he invited me to come to his facility that he and Rick Duman kind of share of restoring uh, vintage Indy cars uh, to where they're operable. And then he he does uh, the added thing with his vintage racing shows throughout the United States. Uh, uh, he was excited to read about Eddie Rickenbacker, and I was excited to get one of his his shirts and everything. But uh, just and then uh, uh, the our our show Indy 500 yesteryear and today with Speedway Insiders Paul Page Bob Gates and myself 
we dedicate it to the memory of Robin Miller, who was the greatest racing rider going. But Mike is a was a great friend of Robin as well, and uh, we went to Working Man's uh, Tavern for lunch to eat the Robin Miller hamburger and everything. So it was a fun day together, and uh, um, I think hopefully we will be doing some things together in the future as well. Outstanding person, and you're gonna you're gonna have fun doing your. Uh, you're, it's going to be a huge net to, to cast with with all of what he does, but I think it's a, just a fantastic person and has been a, around Indy for for years, and he was part of that Val Parnelli Jones team that won with the Johnny Lightning special with Al Unzer in 70 and 71. It's just a uh, delight to know him. Yeah, Mike's got a lot of history and an involvement with a lot of different scenarios over the years, but it's beautiful that he's now meaning the ship, bringing the guys together for the registry so they can have fun with their cars on the weekends and be able to also learn about each other's and the history. And we're going to be basically doing their video uh, calls with images kind of like this. So we can link to their website, but also give them cards with QR codes that they can hand out at any point of the year or or pass mm -hmm. on their documentaries to their family, friends, or their car enthusiasts. So Mike's a big advocate. We're looking forward to this road. This next shot here, you've got, uh, let me see here, it's populate. All right, so top back, um, it's you and Gates and Paul Page, and then who else is in that photo at the uh, long table? Yeah, that's Lindell Lummer, and we uh... – this was after uh, time trials this, this past May at the Iron Skillet, which was a fantastic place to, to have a great meal. And uh, it was. And so that's Lindell with the uh, pink shirt. And you've got the two, two gentlemen that are sitting at the three top with you. Who are those gentlemen? Uh, the one in the center is a good buddy. Uh, for years named Stu Jones. And if you can believe it or not, the one on the left is Brian Fultz, who was one of my students when I taught uh, fifth grade. I got into teaching similar to Larry Rice. Uh, so I had summers to be able to drive a race car. And he was uh, the class president and the person I kind of relied on to, to keep law and order in the classroom and everything. He was, he was good at that. And those were the days when uh, you could send a student down to the cafeteria with your big uh, uh, coffee mug and have him fill it full of coffee and bring it back to me and everything. So I hadn't seen him since, uh, since uh, grade school. So it was fun to get together in Lafayette. All right, and the final shot there is an uh, individual that's holding up two of the copies of your Rickenbacker, what, what's his background and his name? Oh, no, a few people are more dynamic than Pete Gwynn. Uh, he was uh, the starting center on that very, very, very talented uh, Purdue football team in 1977 through 1980 that Mark Herman was a part of. They went to three consecutive bowls and then a very successful businessman and also for 30 some years does the color commentary for all the Purdue football games. And he's better than most because he's so passionate and excited about it. Uh, uh, he would even come out when he played, he'd come out on the football field walking on his hands with so much excitement. So it's, uh, uh, and then he, he was, he's a passionate historian and he was anxious to be able to read about Eddie Rickenbacker and his ownership of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And right, he so also, here's and he, oh, I was going to say, and he also hosts the Purdue Alumni Golf Alley now at the Carmel, Carmel Golf Course as well. And here's a shot of you and Steve McClure. Um, and he was it, basically a, a, a broadcaster for sports radio and racing. Mm -hmm. And also that's another shot of you guys and, and, uh, you, know, you and Gates and, and Paul Page. Uh, but give me a little backstory on Steve McClure. Yeah, McClure was in the same radio and TV department that I was at Ball State. 
Uh, he went on to be more into, bro, I know he was a sports information director for a while at the University of Cincinnati, uh, veteran sports broadcaster in Indiana, and then later on uh, developed a very unique niche where they would do um, uh, radio broadcast of sporting events at kind of smaller size high schools like Franklin and Greenwood and some of those, and they'd cover things like golf and uh, volleyball and track and field and things like that, in addition to your, your football type of thing. So uh, quite a sports fan, and we uh, meet up uh, for – Fast nine shootout, which was the fast twelve shootout this past May at Indy. All right, so here's a shot of Greg Tyler, and then also Bill Shaw. And I've, I've known Greg for a little while. We actually brought him in last year. The the BBC TV network was was looking at doing a documentary on Cheryl Glass, who's Sprint Car Hall of Fame, and and Charlie Patterson help get her to that spot when they were in town filming. They also talked with Greg because he used to run with her on the, on the West coast back in the day. Um, give me a little backstory, your connection with Greg, and then also about uh, Bill. Well, the, just, Greg's just a, a very good friend uh, and friend of other friends. He has was well, the annual uh, barbecue uh, the Tuesday after time trials, uh, and it's uh, it's like being on a cruise ship uh, at the at the Lido deck with uh, all the food that they serve, and a lot of different racing personalities will show up, and it's just a fun evening. And uh, Greg has a passion for for racing and in Indy, uh, uh, similar to mine. So our 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 personalities mesh well. And then uh, that's Bill Shaw, uh, the son of the iconic Wilbur Shaw, three time Indy 500 winner, the 1937, 39, and 40 winner, also a three time uh, second place finisher at Indy. And the real reason why the Indianapolis Motor Speedway still exists. Uh, uh, during the war, it said idle, and Eddie Rickenbacker, who owned it, uh, was now owner of Eastern Airlines, and he was losing interest in the Speedway, and it almost was going to be sold to a land developer where they needed land for the returning service people to have affordable housing, but uh, Wilbur Shaw could not fathom his beloved Indianapolis Motor Speedway being torn down so he was able to persuade or find Tony Hallman and then persuade him to buy the Speedway in November 1945 and then uh, uh, they resumed the running of the Indy 500 in Memorial Day May 30th 1946 so Bill uh, is his son uh, who's um, big Indy 500 historian as well. And um, he's, uh, he shares his dad's passion for the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And how old is Bill in, the, in this shot? He's probably mid 70s, maybe. Okay, that's good. We could keep him around for a few more decades. I'll tell mm -hmm. All right. The, uh, the final shot we have here is uh, you and a, a, a friend of mine, it's Jessica, and she's a granddaughter of, um, I believe it's the Holman side, is that right? Yeah, well, she's a Mary Holman George's granddaughter, and she was there at the uh, Harf uh, breakfast the day before the Indianapolis 500 this year to accept the plaque um, honoring her grandmother into their Hall of Fame. And um, she was. It was our first time meeting. She was very interested in what I knew about her grandmother and about the uh, all the people that made Indy Indy. And uh, it was just a fun meeting. We felt like I'd known her uh, ten or more years or something just for that brief brief meeting. It was, it was a fun 
fun morning that day. And the other shots of Todd Butler or Scott or, just, or Todd Brayton. I'm sorry. Todd Brayton, uh, yes. Yeah, Scott, his brother won it in '95, and or he was on the pole in '95 and '96, and then passed away in '96. Is that right? That's correct. Uh, Todd put the Buick on the pole in 1995. Uh, then they had the split, uh, IRL and CART. Uh, he was with the IRL side, and he was driving one of John Menard's cars in 96 and qualifies on the pole position. So he was a back-to-back -back pole winner. And then between after he wins the pole and before race day, he got killed in an accident at the speedway in his car. And... Uh, Danny Ongaius, the, the very talented race car driver who hadn't been, had not been at Indy since a bad accident in 87, drove the car in 96 uh, as a replacement for, for Todd or for, for Scott. And that's his brother Todd, who was also a very good race car driver. And their dad, Lee Brayton, was a very good sprint car driver. And uh, attempted to make or qualify at Indy on a couple of occasions. But um, one thing about uh, Todd Brayton is he always has a cooler full of ice cold beer. So, Scott, uh, Sean, there's a person you need to know in the month of May. All right. So, here's a shot of an individual I got to meet a few weeks ago that is putting together a team. He's had teams in the past, but this one's the Spirit of Speedway. Mm -hmm. And it's it's Will Marotti. He's out of Connecticut. Yeah, he's had he said he had teams. Um, you know, essentially over the past three to five years, maybe even longer. And and that's the another shot there of um, Ray Skillman in his beautiful car warehouse. Um, so why don't you tell me a little bit about your interactions with Will and then also Ray? Oh, Will's just a has a passion toward Indy, similar to myself. Uh, uh, he is a little like Captain Ahab uh, chasing the Great White, like we do as well. Uh, he was able to put together, and he, he's a he's a preacher. He's a minister from out east, and uh, the unique connection of being a pastor and an Indy car owner as a as it's a good good story to tell and he uh, had his name associated with I know oral Servia that one year the Servia kind of threatened to possibly win Indy that at race day and then Ray Skillman who's a noted uh, uh, car dealer of uh, several car dealerships in the greater Indianapolis area and he, he has a personal museum which is beyond incredible uh because i wrote the book on eddie Sachs, i was particularly interested the uh, the 12 car there was the car that Sachs finished second in the 1961 race and should have won he pitted with three laps to go and by pitting it uh, gave the lead back to aj foy who wins his first race that was the second year in the row that uh, what was the Dean Van Lines car that Eddie Sachs drove, sat on the pole, and he almost won it. But the collection is just beyond amazing. And you can see in the background, they have this extremely detailed carousel that's been restored. And each, uh, each animal uh, on the merry-go-round uh, is painted differently. It's just a, it was a fantastic collection. And he was... Uh, it was good to meet him, and he was certainly interested in uh, one, my Eddie Sachs book, and then also the Eddie Rickenbacker book with, because he's passionate uh, toward the sport. So it was, it, was a, it was a great day to go down there and meet him, and um, he felt like he knew him for 20 years in that brief encounter, and that was this past May. And you also had mentioned that that was the 50th, anniversary uh for the 500 uh when he ran in that car in 61 the number 12 watson so 
I just just kind of getting back because we're getting ready to close this out here. But you know, you you've been involved in the industry for a long time. You've helped preserve a lot of the stories um, for the public. What what would you say is your real passion about it? And did you ever run in any type of cars yourself? Well, I I owned uh, at one time a midget with an Offenhauser engine and uh, I quickly found out you could perhaps afford to buy it but you couldn't afford to run the thing without a sponsorship and uh, the biggest sponsor I had was uh, was Muller and Muller men's clothing it was more uh, got plenty of clothing out of it but not financial things so it was fun to drive that for a while Uh, I guess I quickly realized that uh, I needed to find a sponsor or something. I never did find the sponsor on that. But I have just, it's always been a passion, uh, you know, to be one of the foremost historians of the Indy 500. I I do lectures on it. I've been on cruise ships and uh, given when they've been at sea uh, uh, lectures. And what makes my my talks perhaps a little more unique than others instead of giving basically the same speech i'll let the audience participate and let them pick a year that they may have been there or something and i tell about some of the highlights of that particular race and four or five of those type of stories and and then i always make it a point to stay around and uh, talk uh, to whoever wants to stay around to talk with me and why that works sean is uh there's there's people like at a rotary club or something that really could care less about racing and uh normally you're to talk 30 minutes and i always let them know from the beginning i'm not going to be like the old preacher that goes on and on i know i'm supposed to be up here 30 minutes i'm only going to talk 20 but i'll stay around as long as whoever wants to talk so then they're at ease, they're feeling that they're not going to have to sit through something that would be totally boring to them. But the others who might be a little hesitant to raise their hands and ask a question can come by and, and chat afterwards. And then just recently is the thing that we're quite proud of. Uh, it's the creation of, on YouTube now, uh, our show called Indy 500 Yesteryear and Today with Speedway Insiders. Uh, Paul Page, Bob Gates, and myself. It's a weekly show, um, and it's on uh, YouTube. We're, we're eventually going to take, we got nine episodes now uh, filmed, and we will be taking the audio from those shows and putting it on a podcast uh, format, perhaps with Spotify. But we haven't quite decided on that, but eventually the, the shows that are on YouTube uh will be on podcast as well and it's a blend we talk about what's happening currently in indy car racing but we go real deep into uh, uh, the history of the indianapolis motor speedway and some of the key races and uh for the people who have a a, a love affair with the indy 500 it's a real good show so uh, you can always uh email us at uh, speedwayinsiders at gmail.com and uh, we'll put your comments your questions on our weekly show including you sean you and can where- send us a a uh, question or comment too all right and where, where can they find your book if they want to go purchase it normally the easiest way is just to go to amazon.com and amazon has both of them uh, I always encourage the hardback over the soft cover because it just reads the same, but it just it sits better in a bookcase and looks just more impressive as a hardback with the dust cover. Are you ever going to create an audio version of it? That's not in my plans. We get uh, I I'm more now doing uh, uh, screenplays and uh, other sports endeavors uh so i probably won't i'm also doing the sequel to the rickenbacker book called the tony hallman era book so it's uh it's uh doubtful uh that i'll do it but you know it could happen perhaps i just i probably got too many projects 
that interests me. It's the curse of being a Gemini, Sean. Well, you know that yourself. So it's the uh, fun thing of being able to get involved in several fun things together. But uh, well, I'm... I might be able to help you out. There is ways with technology that we could just basically get the doc scanned and then it could be audio. So I right, might well. be able to help out for, for other individuals to check it out. And you originally connected because of my uh, videos and interviews. What, what, what did you think of the ones that you saw on YouTube that I, oh, I essentially just, uh, orchestrated with uh, for the answer project? I was just uh great envy i mean it's that that good that what you did and impressed me enough that i uh, sought out your telephone number and gave you a call and god what we talked maybe an hour and a half on the phone and it's just almost like we've known each other for decades and it's uh uh like they say in the conclusion of uh, Casablanca and Bogart and Claude Rains are walking off. Louis, I think it's the beginning of a wonderful friendship. So it's, uh, it's, uh, I'm glad to have uh, gotten the chance to know you. And I salute what you're doing, both from the racing end and just also the uh, people who don't have necessarily have a racing career, but have interesting stories to tell in their lives as well. But uh, you, there's so many ways you can go well beyond the uh, the unders just from the racing end that uh, really excites me. So uh, well, I the, salute you what you're doing. Thank you. Yeah, the, if people want to check out the answer interviews, it's at answerstories.com. But I started the company focused on seniors and retirement communities in life stories and segments, like audio chapters in a book and what grew in COVID basically hit hit the world was realizing that well you know what let's make those seniors realize the impact they've made while they're here so interviewing the entire family over the phone to be able to get all the collective knowledge of the ones that are here the ones that are gone and then they all access their own private page and everybody can listen and learn from everybody's perspectives and pass it on to generations and so that's, got, that's and and you got a great person in doing it, and yourself a fellow Eagle Scout buddy and everything. So uh, uh, just uh, it's an honor to be able to do this with you and uh, other future projects. It would be fun to get tied in with you as well. well I look forward to the road ahead. And uh, is there anything else you'd like to say to the viewers out there? No, but I think if you do have a – a love of Indy. Uh, go to YouTube and type in Indy 500 yesteryear and today. Uh, you can also access uh, uh, episodes one through nine. Uh, they're all they're all real good. At some point in time, we will be having uh, uh, different celebrity guests on as as well. Mike Lesman is going to be on in the next couple three weeks to talk about. Uh, his, his vintage racing uh, events that he does. Uh, we're trying to get Johnny Rutherford, three-time Indy 500 winner, on. Bill Shaw, uh, the son of Wilbur Shaw, indicated he'd be on. A lot of people uh, want to be on. Our first celebrity we had was Mark Dill, who's probably uh, one of the foremost experts in the founding fathers of the indianapolis motor speedway so we had that as the as the foundation why we're doing what we're doing but uh you'll like it and uh hopefully there will be a, a screenplay or two that gets made into a movie that'll be much better sean than ford versus ferrari or rush with matt dame i mean with ron howard so uh that'll be a serve as a teaser for the uh your audience there but they're good it's it, it, it has oscar potential all right well denny i really appreciate your time today this has been a lot of great history about a lot of individuals within the racing industry and i commend you on your book and everything right. else that you help to you know save the history as well as tell the current stories and uh when you when you talk to Paul Page and Bob Gates again. You tell my I said hello and thank you I for will. your time. And you just okay, I got to ask one last question. Did I fib to you or tell you a lie when I said my book on Eddie Sachs, The Clown Prince of Racing, 
would be the most sensational book you've ever read? I, I, I definitely already think it is, <laughs> and I think that's a beautiful way to put it out there to the public. All right. Thanks, everyone. Uh, thanks, Sean. You got it. Just stay on the line.